Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Cutting Corners Final with you here today. Today we're going to go over a quick little video over questions that I get asked all of the time. Um, I figured this would be something kind of fun and maybe informative um, over the different processes and things like that that I use. Just something a little bit different. Um, as you can see, I'm feeling pretty good and I can breathe. Um, so Thursday will be two weeks since my surgery and there's not much difference whenever you're looking at me. It, I still look the same. I didn't want my nose job. I just wanted to be able to breathe and not to get sick. But, you know, I'm feeling good and now we're getting back on schedule and I'm going to try to get more videos out to you weekly anyway. If there's any ideas or any projects that you want to see, leave it down in the comments below. I will do my best to make sure that we knock out as much as we can for you. So first things first, we're going to go over some of the questions I get asked all the time. And I have a little notebook in front of me that I wrote down a bunch of them so that way I can let you know. First one is, do you need to seal Oracle? Okay. Here's the thing with the workout is it is a permanent outdoor adhesive for 651. 631 is not a permanent adhesive. So if you're wanting to make it permanent, yes, you need to seal it. Uh, you can either use like a poly acrylic. I seal, if I'm going to seal anything, I typically seal with Maj Podge. I love Maj Podge. I like the dishwasher safe Maj Podge. It works really well. Like if I'm doing glitter on wine glass stems, that's how I seal it and it lasts. I mean, or if I'm glittering like a Yeti or anything like that. So yes, if you're doing 631, seal it. Maj Podge is my favorite way to go. But if you like polyacrylic or things like that, yes, you can use those. But if you're doing a 651, 751, 951, those types of vinyl, they are permanent outdoor adhesives. They are made to last outdoors for minimum five years. A lot of times they're seven to 10 year lifespan. Now, the only exclusion to that that I would say, the reason why I would seal something that's I'm using 651 on is one, if it's something where kids can get to, kids have a tendency to pick at stickers. And if you pick at them, they will come up. So again, if it's going outside where kids can get to it, I would seal it. If you're putting it on wood outside, you don't have to seal it, but with heat and cold and things like that, and wood changes shapes, if you're wanting it to last a super long time, then yeah, I'd probably go ahead and put a clear coat of like matte Maj Podge dishwasher say for something along those lines. Okay. Another question I get is, can you reuse transfer tape and what type of transfer tape do I like? I typically stick with, and you've seen me use it a thousand times in the videos, um, this paper style transfer tape. I like that it has grid lines. I like that it has a paper backing. I can cut it down without a lot of waste. You can reuse pretty much any kind of transfer tape. And I like that this is more low tech. It's a little bit easier to remove. It sticks, but it's not like a harsh stick. Now I have like the clear kind. This stuff's old because I don't use it. I mean, it is not my favorite. As you can tell with it being stuck to itself, it's very hard to get a tiny little piece of whatever you need. So if you're gonna cut it down to the size you need, and then you're trying to make it a bigger piece, it breaks pretty easy. And then it's super sticky. So whenever you're putting it on a surface, I mean, the high tack, this is a whole lot stickier. So to me, unless you're doing like a super glitter that like say you put HTV on adhesive and you're needing transfer tape on it, which at that point you probably shouldn't since it's so thick. 
something like this works better, but for the most part, this is all you need and you can reuse it. I have pieces stuck to the wall because I save them and I reuse them all of the time. One of the things about it too is I like that you have the paper backing. You can take and if you're a perfectionist, you can put it back on there and save it that way. And it just makes it easier when you're taking it off the roll or whatever. Again, it's all personal preference. Another question I get all the time is, what machine do I use to cut my vinyl? Well, first things first, we'll go over all of the different machines I actually own. I have the Silhouette Cameo 3, I have the Cricut Explorer Air 2, I have the Cricut Maker, um, I have my brother DTG, which DTG stands for Direct to Garment, so it's kind of like screen printing, but it prints directly on the shirt for photo shirts because whenever you're using like printed vinyl, a heavy transfer can get a little bit heavy. So if I'm doing a photo shirt, I would much rather use my direct garment. I have my Hotronics Air Fusion, which is the heat press you see me use all the time. And that is a 16 by 20 inch heat press. Love that thing. It's amazing. Most people don't need a heat press like that. Uh, we also have a Graftec 40 inch plotter, which a plotter is just another name for the cutter, like a Cricut or a Silhouette. Graftec is a professional brand that has been around forever. Great brand for if you're wanting to move into making big signs because 40 inches is a lot. And then you have to order, you know, huge rolls of vinyl to be able to cut. Um, also have a Roland Versacam printer, vinyl printer. And that's what we use to print banners when we're doing printed and laminated decals and when we're doing printed HTV or printed Orcal, those types of things. That's what we use the Roland Versacam for. Um, I do not print my vinyl on a home printer. I have not found a good printable home vinyl. I get asked that question all the time. What vinyl do I recommend for you to print at home? None at this point. I have not found one that will hold up to washing. Um, but I mean, if you know of any, please let me know. I will gladly try them out. And if I can find something that's cheaper to recommend to y'all, I gladly will. But at this point, I haven't found a, anything that works well for at home use my personal preference, my personal opinion. I mean, and I get people who bring in transfers and stuff like that that have been bought on Etsy that are printed on home printers. And they just, I mean, you don't get the contour cut if you're doing like a birthday shirt for one thing. Uh, some of them can only go on light shirts and the ones for dark, it's so thick and papery. I just, I'm, I'm not a fan. So even if it does hold its print, the way that it feels and it, the, for when you're washing it and things like that, I'm just not the biggest fan of. Let's see, what else? Okay, and people ask me all the time about denatured alcohol. Is it safe? Why do I use it? You can use rubbing alcohol. I just prefer denatured alcohol. It's a little bit stronger. It works well to clean the sticky off of anything. <clears throat> Excuse me. I still dry out really easily. I have to take and squirt saline solution and stuff up my nose to keep all of that irrigated because I had it hasn't even been two weeks from surgery. I feel a lot better, but I still have to remind myself I'm still healing. Sorry for getting off on that tangent, but you know once it dries out, <laughs> I gotta have something to drink. But, um, I lost all train of thought of what we were talking about. But, um, denatured, oh, denatured alcohol. Yes, you can use regular rubbing alcohol, but denatured alcohol is a little bit stronger. And if you read the people are like, well, it says keep out of reach, it's toxic. If you read out rubbing alcohol, it says all the same kind of things. Yes, you can use it with gloves. I typically don't. I mean, it's alcohol. If you get it in a cut, it burns. It dries out your skin. Other than that, I mean, I haven't had an issue with it and I've used it for years. But feel free to follow all of the manufacturer's warnings on the bottle. 
Sometimes they put warnings on bottles and whatever else because people have done things that they're not supposed to with it. So they have to make it very distinct on what they say so they don't get sued. Or at least that's what I've been told. But denatured alcohol is my favorite for when I'm cleaning whatever to put vinyl on. Or if I'm taking vinyl off, it's great for getting rid of the sticky, the leftover adhesive. Okay, and I get asked all the time, what tools and things like that can I not live without? So, if I'm doing decals, application fluid. Now remember, whenever I'm telling you these things, you do not have to purchase these items from me. Do not expect it. Don't want you to think that I do. It's nice when you do and we greatly appreciate it, but I've been doing this a long time and I want to explain to people the differences in things. And you know, there's other places you can buy these items, but we love it when you purchase from us. We are a small little local business. We are in Nederland, Texas. We are, you know, how many, we're, there's four of us working at, at this store right now. And then Cameron, whenever he's here, so that makes five. Small family business. But I love doing what I do. So application fluid is great. It gives you a little bit of wiggle room whenever you're taking and applying graphics onto cups, onto signs, onto walls. Works great. It also helps whenever you're squeegeeing it out where you don't get as many bubbles or you don't get the bubbles. So I recommend application fluid. Transfer tape, whichever kind you choose, whichever kind you prefer, I always, always, always recommend. Squeegees, now there's a couple of different types of squeegees and we'll kind of go over. This is just a standard squeegee which kind of feels like a credit card, works great. You would use this over the top of your transfer tape. Now if you take and are applying like big graphics or you've gotten a bubble and you're wanting to apply the vinyl without a transfer tape over it, you definitely need a felt edge squeegee. That keeps you from scratching the vinyl because you can see scratch marks on it. Felt edge squeegee, that's what that's for. Is to go over the top of vinyl so it doesn't scratch. Breakaway blade, exacto knife, those types of things. I cannot live without. You can get these pretty much anywhere. The easy weeding wooden pick. You use this or any type of pick whenever you are weeding your vinyl, which works with heat transfer and with adhesive, which adhesives like, and if you look at our website, I don't list spray names because I use everything that we stock on our website or in stores, all permanent professional vinyl. We, for our, Adhesives or sticker vinyls, we stock Oracal 651 for the basic colors. We For our Oracal metallics, we stock Oracal 951. Our neon colors are Oracal 6510s. Our glitters are FDC Ultra Metallics. So that gives you kind of what we use. For our heat transfers, we do Caesar Easy Weed. We use Thermoflex Plus. 90% of my glitters are going to be specialty materials glitters because they offer about 30 or 40 more colors than any other glitter manufacturer. So, and they all work wonderfully. But that's what we stock. Easy Weed and One Pick. Whenever you order one, and I get this question all the time too, or I get emails, it's missing the pick. So if you look, when you take it out of the tube, most of the time they're shipped in a tube. Sometimes whenever they come to me, they don't have the tube. So you'll either get it in this tube or you'll get it just like this. Now, if you look at it, you cannot tell that there is a tip on it. It's got a cork over the end. So all that you do is you remove that cork and then you've got this sharp, little, nice, straight little point. I prefer this over any other pick. And the main reason is, is if you notice how I do it, I hold my pick like a pencil. And I've been weeding a long time. That's part of the reason why I weed so fast is because of the way I hold it. That's why I prefer that one. But if you prefer the hook through Cricut or Silhouette, 
you're more than welcome to go ahead and use it. This is just my preference. For heat transfer, now there are several things that I definitely, I mean, other than the vinyl itself that I recommend. You do not have to have a fancy heat press. You can use a home iron. The Cricut Easy Press, I have seen great reviews on. I'm fixing to order one because I would like to have one to be able to do big tablecloths. I thought that might be kind of fun to have to be able to do bigger projects. But Teflon sheet. I always recommend a Teflon sheet. You need to be able to protect your shirt and you need to be able to pre protect the bottom of your heat surface. So Teflon sheet in my mind is a must and they will last you forever. Like I have Teflon sheets that are 12 years old. I mean, they look disgusting, but they work great. Teflon pillow, I'm doing onesies. Like a shirt like this, if I were gonna put HTV on it, I would put this on the inside so that way, and underneath the zipper, so that way this raises it up and gives me a nice flat surface so that way I get even pressure. Onesies as well doing hats, I take and fold them. I will take and use the heck out of me. I mean, you can see I use it, but it doesn't lose its thickness and it doesn't mess it up. So you can take and bend it however you want. Flat iron covers. I have said this before, but I will say it again. I spent a lot of money on my cheek. I didn't use it today. My hair is naturally bored freaking straight. I mean, don't really need a flat iron. I hardly will use heat products in my hair. I have curling irons, I have blow dryers, I have flat irons. Don't really use them. I don't want to damage my hair. But I use my flat iron up here more than anything to do crafts. But the thing with it is, is I still would like to be able to use it in my hair and I don't want to mess up the items that I'm using with, that I'm doing crafting on, or I don't want to mess up my hair. So I use flat iron covers. It protects the items and I can take and heat press on them with the flat iron because I mean it gets the right temperature. You can take and put as much pressure on it as you want. Works great. And then I can pull them off to use it whenever I'm doing my hair. So that way if they've used a dry shampoo or whatever, it doesn't mess up the flat iron, which does it in turn transfer to whatever I'm heating. So flat iron covers. Definitely a must in my opinion. Thermo tape. If I'm doing a hat or if I'm doing a big project, I use thermo tape because it's sticky enough to hold because the backing for heat transfer is not super, I mean, it's sticky enough where it'll kind of hold it in place. But if you're doing like a curved hat or whatever, this works great to hold everything into place onto the item that you're taking and heat pressing. So definitely I recommend Thermo Tape. And it's called Thermo Tape because it is heat resistant. This is made out of Teflon. You're good to put that under high heat. Last but not least, and definitely I get all kinds of questions about this, this is the guide for measuring out shirts. Right now we offer a 9 inch, or no, 12 inch, 15 inch, and 16 inch. We are fixing to offer more sizes because we've been requested like to have 24 inch ones, we've been requested to have 20 inch ones. So we're going to start offering more sizes. Now, the way that this works is with it being this width, if you have a 15 inch press, then you order a 15 inch guide because you will always find your center as long as you lay your shirt on your heat press straight. If you do not have a heat press, you can order whichever size you want. I still lay my shirts out flat, lay that on right at the collar, and you can still find your center. Very, very easy to do, but that one, is another thing I cannot live without. Um, I get asked about different materials all the time. There are certain things you cannot heat press on to. There are polypropylene bags, like the bags that you see at Walmart HEV. Those will melt in a heartbeat. If you're wanting to put a design on those, I recommend using Oracal and either stenciling on your design, or you could use just regular stencil, or just put vinyl, regular vinyl on it and using a hair dryer and kind of warming it up to make sure it bonds with it really well. Other than that, you don't, I mean, you can't heat on. You can't put heat transfer on most plastics. It will melt. If you can't put it in the oven, 
you cannot put heat transfer on it. I mean, because you got to think about it, 330 degrees for five to seven seconds, 15 seconds, it has to be able to take the heat. And if you can't put it in there that long, then it will not last. You might be able to get it to stick at a lower temperature, but that doesn't mean it will stay that way. So again, heat transfer, no, no on plastic. But Oracal will go on there and it will last. You just need to make sure you apply enough pressure and let it cure. It's a phrase I like to use. Let it sit for at least 24, 48 hours before you start messing with it. And that gives it a chance for that adhesive to really bond with the plastic. I also take, and whenever I'm applying Oracal to like a plastic water jug, I will take and heat it up with a hairdryer and it gets into the grooves and it bonds really well. Cameron's water bottle, I don't have it with me today because he uses it every day at soccer. His vinyl that I put on it a, almost a year ago still looks great because, you know, I took and applied the hairdryer and made him wait 48 hours before he used it, you know? And he's a kid. Again, it's all on personal preference. And if you like this type of video, please let me know. Give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. Uh, leave comments down below of what types of videos you'd like to see, what types, if you have questions about what type of material to use, what on, please leave it down below. Or if you have any questions about how to apply it to sleeves or anything like that. We're trying to expand on our video series and make sure that we are answering all the questions that y'all have. Also remember that we will be doing our next scrap box drawing on November the 4th. It's huge box this time. And December will be freaking fantastic because the amount of vinyl that we go through in November and December is astronomical. All the custom stuff that we do. So to be able to be entered into that, you either need to, there are several different things because every time that you either if you're subscribed to our youtube channel that's one entry if you take and like and share our facebook page that's another if you take and um follow us on twitter instagram snapchat those are all entries and any purchases made online or in store give you additional entries into the scrap box drawing I guess that's it for today. Thanks and y'all have a great day.